and we get a ton of inquiries um, for the long term RV. And you know, in, in our Google listing and everything, we say this is long term only. You have to stay a minimum of, th- of three months. Um, and we get a ton of interest. People are like, I want to stay there. I want to stay there for a year. I want to stay there for whatever. Um, and so it's, uh, it's, it's, I don't know, it's interesting. Welcome to the How to Scale Commercial Real Estate Show. Whether you are an active or passive investor, we'll teach you how to scale your real estate investing business into something big. Gabe Peterson is a commercial real estate investor with a focus on self-storage and mobile home and RV parks. He's also the host of the Real Estate Investing Club podcast. Gabe, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. I'm excited to be here. Hey, man, pleasure's mine. Three questions I ask every guest who comes to the show in 90 seconds or less. Can you tell me, where did you start? Where are you now? And how did you get there? Nice. 90 seconds or less. Quick. Um, Where did I start? I started uh, in corporate, didn't like it, decided to jump out. um, And then I started in wholesales and flipping. Um, What was the second one? Where am I now? I'm doing uh, self-storage facilities, mobile home park, RV parks. And how did I get there? I it was a very up and down road. It was, uh, I mean, you know, it's never linear. And so I I started with the wholesales flips. Um, then I did a, more flips, and then I, man, how did I get from here to there? Um, I think the after that I just jumped into mobile home parks. <clears throat> I had a partner. I met a partner who uh, who was really interested in it. I was thinking about going down the the apartment route, and. Um, you know, decided to go mobile home parks with him, bought one and loved it. And I wanted to stick in commercial. And so here I am now. Man, that's cool. That is very cool. It's a lot of moving, uh, a lot of moving pieces. So at some, at some point, it sounds like you focused, you said, Hey, I'm going straight mobile home parks, or have you or, or, or are you still buying those other asset classes such as self storage and RV parks? I mean, what's, what's yeah. So I, uh, I bought two mobile home parks, um, mobile home RV parks. Uh, I like them, but I really wanted to do um, self storage. That was kind of, you know, I I before getting into mobile home parks, I want I knew I wanted to get into commercial. I didn't know exactly what asset class um, mobile home kind of worked out because I had met that partner. And uh, um, but once I did those two, I wanted to find uh, you know I wanted to look into different asset classes and figure out what really fit. Um, I really like self storage. It's more of a business than it is, um, you know, people live in mobile home parks, RV parks. Um, and self storage is more of a business, and I like that. Um, it's very easy to manage, very, very you know, hands off kind of uh, kind of management style there. Um, build costs, I mean, they're going up now, but it's not as much as you know apartment building stuff like that. And so, I've uh, I've done a lot in um, in self storage, um, and I'm focusing also on RV RV parks now because I do like the the business aspect of RV, and I know we have that in common. Um, and yeah, that's uh, that's where we are. That is that's really cool. So you own mobile home parks. You have been building self storage and also looking at RV parks and RV resorts. What was it like? And, and are you still building self storage? Uh, so I we've bought up to this point. This is the first build. We're just closing on it now. It's out in uh, Indiana. Um, it's got 150 units that exist, and then there's an additional acreage that we're planning to double the the footprint. Um, so we're really excited about that. First time going through a build, and I'm learning a lot. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Well, let's talk about that project a little bit. What type of self storage is it? Um, it the the current footprint is all outdoor. Um, just well, it's a brick for uh, not brick. It's concrete frame um, with it's kind of an older self storage. So it has a, a wooden, you know, standard like house wooden roof, which is mm-hmm. different. Yeah. Um, we want to put in steel frame, but uh, what's there right now is concrete cinder blocks with a, um, you know, a, a wood roof, like, you know, regular shingles. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're all outdoor. You know, we want to do a little bit of climate controlled when we add in right now, nothing's climate controlled it does have an office on site, which is good. It's got fully fenced, including the acreage that we want to expand to. So that's really nice. Hmm. Um, and yeah, it's uh, the prop. Well, the acreage that's there right now, um, we, we had thought originally that we just jump in, throw some gravel down because right now that, that additional acreage is just grass. We'd planned, you know, we'd wanted to jump in, throw gravel down and start having park, uh, people park there, um, do, do lease out parking until we can get 
um, you know, permits and everything for the build. Right. But the city, for some reason, does not want people to park on lots. Um, it's just a thing. Indianapolis, they're just not down. And so that's not going to be a part of our plan. Now we're just going to have to build. Um, it's not, you know, it's not a problem, but just a thing that we kind of just recently popped up. How did you identify this opportunity living? Because you live in Washington State, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. How did you identify an opportunity and then know that it made sense all the way to Indianapolis? Um, I mean, the identification was just off-market marketing. Um, we do a ton of you know lead generation. Mostly, you know, we we used to do a lot of RVMs, um, but recently it's been mostly uh, letters and text marketing. Text marketing has been working well and letters always work well. Um, so it came through there, got in contact with the seller. Um, and how did we identify that it was a good deal? Obviously, numbers work out. And this one actually was not a good deal on paper. It was a six and a half cap. Oh, um, you know, when you when you just going going into it, it's not a good deal. Um, you don't right. want to buy, or at least I don't want to buy a six and a half cap right now. Sure. Um, so it wasn't great, but the seller gave us, you know, we negotiated. Um, I said the price is too high. He said, let's figure this out. He gave us great terms, seller financing, um, interest only. So that you know, kind of allows us to cash flow while we're doing the build. Once we finish the build, it will be a good deal. It'll be you know twelve cap plus, mm. um, you know pro forma. So we're hoping those numbers work out. But you know, we use uh, Track IQ to kind of come up with the um, with the the net rentable square feet um, per capita to make sure that there was enough demand there um, and kind of understand what we could uh, expect to lease them out at um, in the future and. Put it all together in our spreadsheet and decided it was a thumbs up. Right. I'm not familiar with Track IQ. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, it's a it's specific to self storage. Um, it's like a software program that does you know you could use it in due diligence. They do a lot of um, they'll you know you can put in an address and it'll pop back how you know what's the per capita net rentable square feet. Um, you know how many uh, self storage facilities are within X number of miles blah 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 all the all the data that you want to figure out whether this per- particular area is a good um, place to invest or not right oh that's cool that's very very cool you mentioned a word earlier i wasn't familiar with or an acronym you said something to the effect of rvms on the marketing oh side. yeah ringless voicemail ah right yeah that's been catching yes. a lot of uh, a lot of flack in the industry i think uh yeah. of understandably late. so and that's kind of the reason why i stopped is because i didn't really feel good about it i didn't Cause I, I, you know, ringless voicemail, you're not actually calling the person. So that's good. I feel like it's not, you know, it's not that annoying, um, but it is kind of annoying to see, a, see you missed a call and then see a voicemail. Um, so that's kind of the reason we stopped there. Got it. Yeah. Familiar with ringless voicemail. It just maybe a little slow on the, uh, because it's something I don't use every day uh, or use at all. It's it. Uh, that was, that was why I wanted some definition really yeah. on that. Cool. All right. So you've got this, this climate controlled or, or you've got this storage facility, you're building currently. What does opportunity look like for you right now? Uh, again, you know, assuming you know you've got a mobile home park, you're building a self storage. Um, you know, you've got you've got your hands, I think, in the RV resort space. So, what 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 what's an opportunity for you? To say, hey, that that looks good for me. Um, I mean, right now it's just I'm trying to hire more uh, an acquisitions um, uh, a specialist to help out with the. I've got a ton of leads coming in. And mm. so it's just going through what's currently there um, and identifying the ones that are actual deals. <clears throat> um, right now, I'm focusing on self storage and RV RV parks. Uh, I've got you know an absurd amount of data for both sides, and I just need to. It's just a matter of like getting through it. Um, so I mean, opportunity always comes down to the deal. You know, I, you know this. I'm sure everybody listening knows this. You gotta. Any deal can work. You just got to make it work. Um, so it'll just come down to whether the seller will give us good price or terms, um, whether the area makes sense and all that stuff. So right now, opportunity is just getting through that lead, the pile of leads we got and uh, and finding finding the gems. Right, right. Absolutely. Tell us about the RV, uh, RV park and RV resort side for you guys. Uh, you currently own in that space? So we have an RV park, but it's a long-term stay RV park. Um, so it doesn't doesn't operate as an as a resort. Um, the average tenant stay there, I think, is like a year and a half, something like that. So it's really long, um, but it's still you know it, it the 
the rental prices are higher than you would see uh, in a mobile home park. Um, the, our mobile home side is, you know, we have a mobile home park that's within a half hour of that that mm-hmm. RV park. Um, the mobile home they rent for uh, shoot, I should know this. <laughs> they rent for three hundred and fifty, and the RV rents for four hundred and fifty. Um, that's market for each side, and so RV long term stay RV for some reason rents higher. And so that you know that's the only RV we have right now. I I have um, more interest in the actual RV resort side. The long term stays, it's good. They're good. To, you know they're good. They cash flow well. Um, but I the resort side seems more more interesting to me. Right. Yeah. Talk to uh, talk to us a little bit about that long term component. Is this outside of city limits, where it's like a county only, and there's no restrictions on people living in their RVs year round? Is if it's outside city limits, it's like right on the cusp. I I don't remember to be honest. Um, but these people are there twelve months out of the year. Yeah, yeah, they're there. Got it. Okay. Yeah. A lot of a lot of what we've encountered in the RV space is that if it's inside city limits, there's usually an ordinance that prevents them from living there. Like, hey, you know what? They can't they can't live there thirty days in a row. They have to go somewhere mm-hmm. else. Maybe they they can stay for a couple of weeks right. and they gotta leave. There's some each city and each municipality is gonna have their own kind of criteria. Uh yeah. because And they, we had actually been uh the city called us on that. They um they were gonna cause then you have an additional tax. Um I can't remember what the tax is called, but it's like a short term stay tax. Um and so we just let them know that hey these people stay there for longer than 30 days um, and they didn't tax us on it. So, Um, but I think we are outside of the, outside of the city limits. We must be County. Yeah. Well, and and again, maybe the city allows it. It's again, this is on a, it is a very hyper local ordinance sort of thing. I just was really curious what that RV long-term RV park is like. Why is it an RV park and why does it, why is there, is there a potential to convert it to a mobile home park? I guess, if the cash flow is higher, why would you, why would you? There is not a potential to convert it to a, a mobile home park because the the lot size um, mm-hmm. is smaller for RV versus mobile home. Sure. And so it fits RVs, does not fit a mobile home. Um, it used to originally it was a KOA, uh, a Camp of America site. So it has um, at the front of the property. There's this huge structure um it used to be like must have been like a rec room kind of common room um with an apartment on top and and then uh public bathrooms and so it looks and it also has campsites with electric electrical um which are you know are way small but you can't put any we don't have any use for those there um but yeah it looks just like a koa but now there's just long-term stay rvs um the structure is actually really nice we're glad we got that because the the top unit, um, the apartment on top, we uh, that's where our apartment or our property manager lives, and then she has the full bottom to do events. To uh, she has her office down there, all that sort of stuff. We also have laundry um, laundry units in the in the facility, um, so it's uh, it works out pretty well. So if I'm hearing you right, just to talk about the metrics of the RV long term park, the spaces are smaller, mm-hmm. and they rent for more dollars per month. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, again, that, that both of those are compelling metrics as to why maybe a longer term RV park would be maybe be something to look at versus even a mobile home park. Yeah. And we get a ton of inquiries um, for the long term RV and, you know, in, in our Google listing and everything, we say this is long term only. You have to stay a minimum of three months. Um, and we get a ton of interest. People are like, I want to stay there. I want to stay there for a year. I want to stay there for whatever. Um, and so it's, uh, it's, it's, I don't know, it's interesting. It could be due to the price of um, housing out here in Washington state. Right. Uh, but yeah, that, yeah, that's, that's really, really cool. Are you actively looking for more, uh, RV parks? So I have a, a you know, a national database and it, um, long-term short-term doesn't matter to me. I'm just, you know, I just kind of jump on opportunities as they, as they present, present themselves. God, I would prefer, I'd like to go into the actual, you know, resort side. Um, I think that would be fun. Uh, but if, you know, if the long-term stay RV park popped up, I'm not going to, I'm not going to turn my nose to it. <laughs> right. Right. Deals and money. I say it over and over again on this show. Those are the two things that, uh, that we need for this business to go around. Sound like you're solving the deal side of it. Uh, mm-hmm. sound like you're an excellent marketer and you sound like you said, you've got more leads coming in than really, you know, 
really how to filter through and, and, and figure out which ones are the ones you want to chase. Talk to us about the financing side of these opportunities, though. What does that look like for you? Yeah, so um, I'm actually just doing the first one. All the pro- uh, properties that I bought so far, I've done it with my own money, um, money from wholesales that I've done, um, or money from you know very close family members like my parents, my sister, you know, close friends, stuff like that. But just recently, this this deal that I'm doing in Indianapolis, I'm actually um, uh, it's going to be partnering with a um, a guest that I had on my podcast. So this is the first one that I will be bringing outside capital for. Um, and I'm pretty excited that you know it's uh, it, it kind of capital can be kind of the the restraint you know the 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 litmus test not really litmus test but the barrier that a lot of investors um, run into and I know I did at at many points in my career and it's uh, kind of seeing the potential of just you know if you can find a deal and you can run the deal there's capital out there um, there's plenty of people who are willing to you know support you in the in the capital side for for equity. Yeah, no, that's 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 very cool. I love the idea. And that's something people ask me all the time. They're like, why do you podcast? Why do you why do you run a daily show? It's like, well, it's because I meet amazing other investors in the space and the number of deals that we've put together just from running the show is uh it's pretty astounding. So mm-hmm. I love I love that you're partnering with one of your previous guests on this uh on this opportunity in Indianapolis. Before we go into the last question of how our investors can get in touch with you and learn more about you. Tell me, I mean, is there anything else that uh, you'd love to share with our guests, lessons you've learned along the way, things you feel like people should be paying attention to or doing right now that would uh, directly impact their real estate investing career? Um, I mean, one lesson that I I kind of take from my own experience is that it always takes longer than you think it's going to take and always hit the fan. Um, And I I feel I even today, I need to, I always try to remember those two facts that things always take longer and things always go wrong. Um, and if you take those as facts that are going to happen, then everything else is okay. Um, and so if you're out there and you're just getting started or you're, you know, you're, you've got maybe one or two properties under your belt and you're feeling the pressure, um, just know that you, if you just keep going, it'll, uh, it'll work out. Absolutely. That's, that's, that's sound, sound advice, Gabe. Certainly appreciate that. If our listeners want to get in touch with you or learn more about you, what is the best way to do that? Uh, best way is through the podcast website. That is the real estate investing club.com. Um, and that's it. The real estate investing club.com. My email is Gabe at the real estate investing club.com as well. Awesome. Gabe, thanks for your time today. I do appreciate it. Sam, thanks a bunch.